Okay, quick summary of what you're going to see in this video. I'm going to show you exactly how I get the software off the website for Magic Lantern, how I install it on my memory card, how I put that memory card into the camera, how I update the firmware on the camera, how I take backups of the old firmware the camera came with, how to take away the menus on your camera, which you could not previously take away. With Magic Lantern, you can take them away. Also, I'm going to show you how to stop your camera automatically turning off. So you're going to get all of that in today's video. I'm going to give you a bit of information about Magic Lantern as well. So the answers and to common questions you might have. I've avoided Magic Lantern for a long time. A lot of people in the comments have asked for the video to show how to do it. I wasn't comfortable with it because the last time I saw it five years ago, Magic Lantern wasn't excellent. Um, but I used it today. I installed it on this camera right here. 5D Mark II is quite easy. It took me five minutes to do and I was quite surprised how easy it was and I was avoiding it for that reason. I thought, you know what, let me just do it. So I did it on this camera because I'm setting up an additional side standing desk where I need another camera on my right hand side there. So with this uh, older uh, camera that I use, it's actually a Canon DSLR. It's a 5D Mark II older camera. It's not designed to be a webcam or a live streaming camera, but I'm going to use it for that purpose. The reason for that is I want to get a really nice video for you guys. I'm setting up an additional uh, studio setup on the right hand side where I can stand up and do talking shots like a uh, standing desk type environment and I need a nice front angle. You'll check in the chapters, it might be a longer video, about 10 to 15 minutes, but I'm going to show you the full process step by step how I made my Canon 5D Mark II, an older full frame DSLR camera into a live streaming camera using a HDMI capture card, the cheap ones I talk about. This bit of the video is going to be how and why you should install Magic Lantern. So is Magic Lantern safe? So this is a firmware on your camera. Think of it like a program that you run which allows your camera to do additional functionality. Uh, they recommend not using a newer camera because you will void your warranty guarantee kind of thing but if you have a newer camera anyway you probably already have the feature for clean HDMI out because this camera is so old that to be honest it wouldn't really matter if it's something went wrong that's why I was comfortable using it I've got two DSLR cameras one is a Canon T2i which I'm using right now there and the older camera so it's fine so in terms of safeness uh, people tend to say you can use it if you want to use it for live streaming and that's your decision to make. I'm using it right now so you can see my example as proof as it working and if I've had any problems I'll update the video and tell you if I have any problems so it's like a, a real opinion you can hear from me. Uh, apart from that how do you use Magic Lantern? It's basically uh, a step-by-step -step process that you can add some software on your memory card which you put into your camera. Your camera updates using that memory card, the firmware update which I'm going to show you step-by-step -step, and it basically puts a new firmware on your camera which you can use. So that's how. Uh, I'm going to show you additional steps so make sure in the chapters to see that whole thing. I'm just doing a summary right now. Does Magic Lantern damage your camera? It it doesn't mean it damages your camera but it can come with limitations you remove the card too early the camera will freeze little things like that so you need to be extra careful with how you handle that camera um what is magic lantern so i've set up my screen here i can show you the program itself magic lantern is a type of program i was quite worried about this for a while because i've never um liked to put additional software on my cameras so i avoided using um magic lantern for quite a long time the reason being when I last saw a video about it about five years ago, it's quite a faff to set up. But I did it today. I got my memory card. I installed it on my 5D Mark II camera. And I was quite surprised. It was very easy to do. And also, I discovered that it was a lot easier than I thought. And there wasn't all that monitoring business going on whereby I had to check the cards and do firmware updates and manual. So I'm going to talk you through it step by step right now to show you exactly what I mean. I'll show you the screens, I'll show you how I downloaded it, how I put it on my card, all of that, so you don't have to worry. Okay, so firstly, I'm showing you my screen here right now. I'll give you this link in the description. This is the Magic Lantern website. It's a bit confusing, so what we'll first do is go on to Downloads Utilities, and then it gives you an option here for Builds. Builds refers to the types of cameras supported. 5D Mark II is listed, as well as some other cameras. Uh, once you've done that, you basically go to the zip file on the top, the green button, click on that and download it. That is a file you need. Save that in your computer, on your computer, and then we're going to unzip that to get the files from it. So let me quickly do that and show you on screen. I'm unzipping that downloaded document from the Magic Lantern website. 
as three files there, two, one folder and two files. Grab them and pull them out. These are the files we need to put onto our memory card. So your memory card is something that you put in your camera. I have already copied those files onto my memory card. I'm putting the memory card into my Canon DSLR, you can see right now. I've turned it on and I'm going to my menu and then the right screen is the firmware screen. You click update, you press OK, you can see on screen and you'll see the camera turn off, turn on and go through the process of installing. Top corner you can see it says Magic Lantern install, backing up existing uh, software and then you get a screen telling you please turn your camera off, please restart your camera. So at this point the light's flashing blue you can see, you can turn the camera off and turn it back on and then it will boot into the Magic Lantern. It's basically as easy as that. So now I have that program installed and running on my DSLR camera. How you get into it is you press the delete button and it goes into the Magic Lantern uh, menu and then you use your scrollers as you would normally do to go through the menus. So these are all additional menus that I didn't have in the past. So I've turned my camera off and on. I'm going to show you here on the manual uh, menu. The firmware now says 2.1 and then it says uh, also additional information before it's just 2.1 so i've turned the camera off i'm going to put in my hdmi cable and this is the view on the battery you can see it says 37 percent so make sure you got a bit more battery than i did here you can see the magic lantern menu has those menus on so we need to get rid of those menus so the first point of call is go along the top and go on to your option for overlay and where it says global draw make that off this is for Canon. That'll basically turn off all the on-screen menus. You'll see there's a little focus window there that's come off. So now we are good to go. Uh, if your camera keeps turning off after like a, a certain amount of time in your camera menu, you've got an option there to turn auto power off uh, to the off point, not to a, a duration. So your camera won't turn off automatically. So that is a quick look at that. I did speed through that, but you can go through this again if you need to. Um, apart from that, once you've installed your Magic Lantern, you can take your memory card out Put it back into your computer and copy out the files. You can copy out all the files because this can act as a backup. If your camera turns on and you formatted your SD card and you lose the files, you basically need to put those files onto the card again. So I've made a folder here called Magic Lantern Working Folder that has all the files in that are the Magic Lantern files. So I can easily copy and paste them over again to use. Okay, so I did power through that quite a bit there, but I'm hoping this explains the steps. I wanted to show how easy it is. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I might do a more detailed version of that if it didn't make sense, so let me know. Let me just recap and show you exactly what's going on. So here's the DSLR camera. I've put in the camera SD card. This has the Magic Lantern software installed on it. So I need to always keep this card in the camera and I can't delete the folders off there. Luckily, as I showed you in the ending clip there, you can save copies of the files. So I'll put that into my camera. And at the moment, this, gonna, this is gonna be a live streaming camera. For now, I have ordered a dummy battery, which means the camera can be powered for a long amount of time. That's on the way. But for now, I've fully charged my battery so I can show you an example of what this looks like. So that's inserted. Now on the side of the camera, you can see there is ports and the HDMI port. Remember this nice handy little option we've got. It's a HDMI to a mini HDMI cable. And I put that into my camera, HDMI out. So now that's ready. Next, I will put in the actual HDMI lead. Once I put the lead in, then I can put that on a tripod, turn it on, put it into live view mode and focus it. Remember it's an older camera so you won't have autofocus. So I'm gonna focus it with my little focus uh, extra option here I've got there. You can see that is like a grip for focusing easier. And once that's focused, I can show you the front shot. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got my HDMI cable. This is plugged into a HDMI capture card. And the HDMI capture card is plugged into the USB of my computer. So let's go and plug this HDMI into my camera, just like that. Okay, there, so that's plugged in. Now we're gonna turn the camera on doing this upside down and you'll get a few flashing and because the HDMI is plugged in the back screen will not come on you put the camera mode on as in recording a camera and then hopefully I can show you this right now just like that and let me just focus that probably is focused I'll have to play with that but yeah that's the camera you'll see there's no menus so like the little focus bar we used to get, I don't have that anymore. And the best thing about this is at the moment, the screen has got bars on it. So I did a separate video about how to take the bars off. Let me go back to the main view because this is wobbly. So that's the camera there plugged in right now. I'm going to put it on his tripod and show you a wider view of what the plan was with this. 
So this is going to be the setup. I'm doing a live stream. I'm going to do a standing talking shot there. So let me quickly show you the setup now. It still hasn't finished, but I want to show you what it looks like. So there. Right now, I'm talking into this mic here. A bit more setup needs to happen. The lighting needs to improve. I'm going to have a desk in front of me, but it gives you an idea of what you can achieve with the second angle. I don't think it's quite right focused yet. I need to crack the focus, and it's always going to stay there focused on the camera. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Let's go back to a sit down. You can see there, that was all done live streaming software and OBS. That's why I used Magic Lantern. What do you think? Are we getting there? Thank you. Hope you found that useful and helpful to see what this camera can do. All the cameras can still be used as webcams if you buy the right gear. Make sure you have the right cables, things to make the HDMI connector the right size. And all these will be linked in the description. So you can check out my Amazon shop where I'll actually give you a, a play idea list with all that information in. So I'm hoping you find this useful. And I'll link you to another video here about different cameras for live streaming.